Most financial advisory firms' clients do not feel that engaged with their advisor. This is coming from a December 2019 study from YCharts, which asked the question, how frequently does your advisor contact you about your portfolio, your financial plan, your holdings, and how engaged do you feel with the firm? And you can see for yourself right here what they found, but for those who have less than 500,000 in AUM, YCharts um, found that 69% of those folks said that they were infrequently or very infrequently contacted. And those who had more than 500,000 in AUM with the firm said 46% uh, of them said infrequently or very infrequently. I'm Samantha Russell, the Chief Evangelist at FMG Suite and 20 Over 10, and today we're going to talk about these research findings, what they mean, and what clients want in terms of communication from their advisor. Okay, so that same study from YCharts also asked the question, would more frequent or more personalized contact with your advisor result in you having more confidence in your financial plan, which is something we all want, right? More confidence usually means a higher satisfaction from the client and often less likely that they're gonna go looking somewhere else for another advisor. So for respondents under 50, 77% said yes, more communication and more contact is going to lead me to be more confident. And for those over 50, 45% said yes as well. I really wanna pay attention to that under 50 crowd though because this is where the puck is headed, right? For people who are um, growing up in this digital age where communication is something we're all very used to, frequent emails, frequent text messages, video communication, we expect a certain amount of communication um, from the people that we work with. And so it also is interesting to think about what kind of communication is gonna work best for these different groups. So Y Charts also asked, how would you like to receive information, statistics, visuals, articles, uh, anything like that about your portfolio holdings or about financial planning, tips, um, budgeting, any other how-tos. And what they found was that email blew all the other ways of communication just out of the water across all age groups. You can see for yourself right here in this chart, it is the number one preferred method. And it's not just Y starts charts <laughs> study that found this. The Spectrum group did something similar where they asked a group of people, how would you like your um, advisor to educate you on a new product? So this is beyond what you're currently have going on with your portfolio or your financial plan, but learning about new products or new services. And email, again, was the number one most selected choice. So we know email is the way people are looking to get communication. And we also know people wanna get more communication. So what should you be doing as a firm? There's a couple tips I wanna give you. Tip number one, you should really be creating content every single week. And what I mean by creating content, I don't mean you have to go out there and write a whole blog post yourself or create a video. That's great. You know, that's the bar we all um, aspire to be at. And if you yourself are not able to do that, maybe you hire a ghostwriter or you utilize something like 20 over 10's content library where you can choose an article and edit it yourself. But you can also do things like scour the internet for really relevant articles from the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or CNBC and compile them into one section with links out so that you can send those off to your clients. So that leads me to point number two, you should be emailing your clients weekly. They should come to expect to hear from you weekly. And this type of roundup that I'm referring to is a great way to do it, right? Maybe you have a recent blog post you wrote that you wanna include, but it could be something you've read online. You should include a short little synopsis of what the article is about, um, why it's relevant for your clients to be reading, but it shows them that you're up to date on what's happening in the news. You're paying attention to all of the headlines on their behalf, and you are you know, sharing this information with them, but it's really all about you're the one out there getting in front of it on their behalf, right? Just helping with that peace of mind. You also, in this email, what I highly suggest you do is always share some sort of little personal antidote. This is the thing that's gonna keep people coming back and help them you know, remember that personal connection they have with you. So for instance, uh, one advisor I know 
at the bottom of every email he sends weekly, he shares a cute picture of his little kids and what's going on with their family. Another advisor I know, he loves to do DIY projects. So at the bottom of every email, he shares an update about something he's working on in his you know, DIY, uh, whether it's a home improvement or something he's tinkering around with in the garage. Somebody else always shares their staff book of the week. So everybody on their team takes turns recommending a book that they've been reading that month and why they love it. The sky's the limit, but something personal is really, really helpful in these emails. Okay, the second thing I want you to do is also create a weekly email for your prospect list. So most people are usually emailing their clients regularly or semi-regularly, although of course this study is showing not enough, but prospecting emails are usually something that we don't think about doing as often because we haven't established that rapport with that audience. The email communication is a great way to do that. So what you can do here is kind of send a very similar email as the first one you'd be sending to clients, except with a different spin on it, right? Instead of the idea that you're reading all these articles on their behalf, you're trying to show the prospect what type of services and trends you're staying in front of, the type of planning that you provide, and what you know news and articles you're paying attention to for your clients to show them what it would be like to be a client of yours. Now you can also still include that personalized section in this email as well, and I definitely suggest you do that. Again, people choose to work with people, not necessarily brands or businesses, so that's just gonna reinforce the personalized nature of your firm. All right, and just a few more things to consider when you're sending this email. The subject line that you choose is highly important. So instead of every week just saying, you know, monthly newsletter, give a preview of what's gonna be inside. Maybe it's something like what, you know, our team thinks is the most important about the recent um, CARES Act, or, um, you know, everybody's talking about GameStop, what we think about it. Whatever it is that's one of the articles in that list that you want people to pay attention to, to kind of just really pique their interest, that's gonna be much more impactful than just, you know, Russell Investments weekly newsletter. So use the subject line as a way to bait more people into opening. And know that timely content is always going to perform better than more evergreen content. So we found at FMG Suite that the open rate for emails containing timely content in 2020 was 40%. That is huge. The standard open rate is usually 15 to 25%. So 40% open rate when the email contained timely content that spoke to something that was happening in the news or the headlines. Hopefully those tips are helpful for you as you think about your own client and prospect communication plan. I'm Samantha Russell. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure you check back next week. Every week we share a great marketing video just like this to help you grow your business.